All right, boys and girls, let's get ready to play a little cell organelle bingo. We're going to play it on the bingo board. The only thing you need to write on the bingo boards are the main titles of each of these slides. You're going to put the words on there, just the term, not the definition. I'll call out the definitions while we play bingo, and you'll mark the chips. You get a bingo, you win. Yay, bingo. If you don't want to win bingo, then uh, just put everything in the order with which we go during the PowerPoint. While this uh, video lecture is playing, you'll have to write the names of all the different organelles as well as their function, and in the middle, check which kinds of cells they belong to. Do they belong in just plant cells, just animal cells, or can they be found only in prokaryotic cells? Notice they're check boxes. You could be checking one, two, or all three. Make sure that you're ready for all of that. It's going to go kind of quickly, so that we're going to eliminate the participation component, and you're just going to write furiously until your hand is sore, and then we'll play bingo, and it'll be more fun. But we got to eat the broccoli first, so let's do it here. Maybe. All right, first term. You do not have to write it here. But you do have to just write prokaryotic cell on your bingo board. But you should know that those are smaller cells that do not have a nucleus and only single membranes. Up here on the screen, that real-life Patterson best be pointing at, or at least lasering at from across the room, you lazy sack. Mm-hmm. I said it. Showing two different prokaryotic cells with some weird exterior organelles. More on that later. Next word to get onto your bingo board, eukaryotic cells. These are larger cells that do contain a nucleus and double membranes. As you can see from the picture, again, eukaryotes are much, much larger than the prokaryotes, and they also have a wider variety of organelles due to that sweet, sweet double membranous technology. So make sure you have eukaryotic cells written here on your bingo board. You do not need it on here yet. Don't worry, I'll let you know when you need to start using this paper. Plant cells, another one, get it, plant cells on your bingo board. These are eukaryotic cells that contain cell walls and usually contain chloroplasts. Now, worth mentioning that uh, many different plant cells, or sorry, many different eukaryotic cells have cell walls. Really, animal cells are the only ones that don't. For the scope of this class, we'll focus pretty heavily on plant eukaryotic cells and animal eukaryotic cells. But don't forget, fungi, protists, even bacteria have cell walls as well. Animal cells, these are the only eukaryotic cell to lack a cell wall. Therefore, as you can see in the picture, they're a lot more rounded in shape and tend to be uh, less well supported and a little bit more squiggly. Think baggy, full of water, just not very supportive at all. Animal cell, make sure you get animal cell on your bingo board as well. The final term that you do not have to write on here, but you do have to write on your bingo board. I wonder how bad that messes up the camera's focus is the word organelles. These are small components of a cell that perform a specific function. We think of these like little internalized compartments. They're analogous to organs in a person. But yeah, these are cell organelles. There's a picture of a plant cell with a crap ton of different organelles. Woo! Let's talk about those organelles. Here's the first one that you have to write on here. Plasma membrane. That one's first. Plasma membrane. Over in the function area, Right, that is made of phospholipids. Remember, all membranes are made from lipids. Phospholipids, that's what lets it have the two layers. Surrounds the cell, controls what moves in and out of the cell. As you can see in the picture there, you've got these different like proteins and gobbledygook stuck in it. We talked a little bit about that yesterday. We'll talk more about it next unit. But that just allows for the things to be moving through the membrane if they're too large to just squeezel through the cracks. So plasma membrane controls what moves in and out of the cell. Get it here. Get it here. Check the cells it belongs to. Get it on your bingo board as well. Not sure what it belongs to. Uh, maybe we'll do a shout it out. Cell wall. This adds additional support for plant cells. Notice I said plant cells. Check there. All right, get it here. Additional support. Make sure you also get it on your bingo board. Keep in mind, though, that bacteria, prokaryotes, will have a cell wall as well. So really, you should check them both. Just not animal cell, no cell wall there. The cytoplasm. This one, water-based solution inside the cell may have many different amino acids, carbohydrates, and salts dissolved in it. Uh, if the cell is a, a baggie full of water, this is all the water. It's got all these different things in it. Don't forget to get it on your bingo board as well. You can just put cytoplasm. You may or may not see cytosol on the test, so make sure that you are prepared. Don't freak out if you see cytosol. You go, I don't know, that is only not cytoplasm. And they're the same thing. They're the same thing. For the scope of this class, we'll consider them the same thing. 
nucleus. That organelle that everybody thinks is like way more important than it is, make sure you get it here. Here, protects genetic hereditary information. It also, I guess, makes ribosomes and RNA, so I guess it's a little bit more than the filing cabinet that we talked about before. Make sure you have nucleus somewhere randomly on your bingo board as well. Here you can see in the picture, it's very large, usually somewhat centrally located, and it's got, uh, like in the other picture, you can see it's got the squiggly, uh, membranous reticulum thing all over that as well. More on that in a flu sides. But first, synucleolus. Now look at the spelling. Huh? Ah, not the same thing. This is the nucleolus. It's the center of the nucleus, and it's a section where the DNA is really condensed. If you think of the filing cabinet as the nucleus, and but all the files are like pushed back in the corner of the filing cabinet, that would be the nucleolus. Not really even technically an organelle, but you'll put it on here with this. Probably just check your karyotes because prokaryotes don't have a nucleus at all. Don't forget to get nucleolus on your bingo board as well. Nuclear membrane, imaginative name for the membrane, that's around the nucleus. Make sure you note in your function over here that it's the double membrane, sort of analogous to the cell membrane. It controls what can go in and out of the nucleus, basically keeping the DNA in and hopefully everything else out. Nuclear membrane, make sure you get it here, here, check them boxes, and get it on your bingo board as well. Ribosomes. Ribosomes are crucial for cells to be able to function because they assemble the amino acids into protein. Amino acids are just floating all around the cytoplasm, and the cell just grabs them and smashes them together. And by the cell, I mean the ribosome grabs them, smashes them together to assemble our polypeptides. These ribosomes, as we said earlier, are made inside the nucleus. Here is, uh, you can see the ribosomes that can be floating all over the cytoplasm. They could also be stuck on that reticulum thing outside the nucleus. And then over here is a nice picture of the ribosomes just cranking out some protein, because why not? The rough endoplasmic reticulum. Let's practice saying that. You got endoplasmic reticulum. Endoplasmic reticulum. Seems scary. Not too bad. It's the rough ER for short, or the RER, the RER. It's continuous with the nucleus. That means it's touching the nucleus. It's actually made out of the same kind of membrane as the nucleus, and it moves ribosomes around the interior of the cell, which is going to help with protein synthesis since ribosomes perform protein synthesis. Up next to it, you can see you've got smooth ER. Often in textbooks and graphics, the artists will render it differently, but the working hypothesis right now is that the smooth ER and the rough ER may actually all be the same membranous ER, just maybe the ribosomes haven't got to that part yet. Maybe they never do get to that part. We do know that the smooth ER synthesizes lipids, right? It makes lipids and also helps with detoxing the cell. So your liver has a lot of this since your liver is in charge of storing extra sugar and turning it into fat and also basically being a filter for all the crap you put in your body. On the electron micrograph, you can see the rough ER speckled with peppery ribosomes and the smooth ER, not so much. The Golgi, before you write it, before you write it on here, and define it, make sure this is the only one that has to be a capital letter at the front. The Golgi is named after Dr. Camillo Golgi, who is the person who discovered it. The rest of the organelles capitalize how you want. This one must be capital G. Could be the Golgi complex, could be a Golgi body, could be Golgi apparatus. All those are referring to the same Golgi, so we'll just say Golgi. You see Golgi? It's a Golgi. It's a set of flat membrane bound sacs, which sort of, it's really almost just like a big old pile of vesicles that have been smushed into each other. And it processes proteins for export from the cell using vesicles. This is what the paragraph in the homework was about, how uh, you can see here you've got the different uh, vesicles coming off the rough ER full of those proteins made by the ribosomes there comes over to the Golgi. The Golgi takes it in, does mysterious Golgi type things to it, sends a vesicle on out to the side uh, to the cell for it to be exported, you know, get it out. The Golgi is often comparable to like a UPS or FedEx or like the USPS of the cell. The Golgi, capital G. Have you been adding them to your bingo board? Make sure you do. 
vesicles. We just talked a lot about vesicles that are involved with the smooth and rough ER and the Golgi and the plasma membrane. These are small transport organelles and they can just bleb right off other organelles. It'd be like if I could just take them and bleb it off like, uh, like how guys do with like the balloon animals, right? And it's really cool when they do it with the swords and like twist it and make a little ball and stuff it on the inside. Man, I wish I could fold like balloon animals. That'd be sweet. But I can't. So instead, I'll just tell you that vesicle is basically for transporting things, not for storing them, just transporting things. Think of it uh, like your book bag. Your book bag, you really shouldn't be using that to store anything because you carry it on your back all day. So now one you can just think of as a transport. So henceforth, we shall call the book bag your vesicle. You say, oh, I need to get it out of my vesicle. Or could you please move your vesicle so that I can get through here? That sort of thing. Vesicles. What? I'm thirsty. I've been talking for a while. Back up off me, real life Patterson. Cytoskeleton. It's composed of microtubules, which give support and shape to the cell. Additionally, these vesicles here, when they're moving around, they're moving on like a little highway or like a, like a railway of cytoskeleton. So it plays a crucial role and actually makes up several different organelles. One organelle that the cytoskeleton makes up. One organelle that these cytoskeleton makes up are centrioles. Centrioles, you can even see in the picture, like a big bundle there of cytoskeleton, just microtubule proteins lined up. These play a big role in mitosis, which is cell replication and division. So it helps organize the cell. More than that, when we get to our mitosis unit, which is how you get more cells, which is crucial for like the growing and the developing and the not dying. Make sure you get it here, here. Check those boxes. Eukaryotes only. Put it somewhere on that sweet bingo board. Chloroplasts, chloroplasts. Chloro even means green because it's a green organelle. It performs photosynthesis, which is the process whereby plants take in sunlight to generate their own food. So it generates food for the plants. Did I mention how it's plants? Mmm, chloroplast. It's for plants. Make sure you have that all on there, children. Vacuole, usually a larger organelle used for storage. Uh, plants, as you can see on the right side here, usually have a much larger vacuole because they're doing all that photosynthesis and storing all that food. However, animal cells can have vacuoles as well. They just tend to not be as large unless it's a specific cell for storing things, then it could be a little larger. But in general, the vacuole on plants are much small or much larger than the vacuole on animal cells. So, uh, yeah, prokaryotes don't have it. Do this, get vacuole somewhere randomly on your binger board. Mitochondria, this is kind of a cool one. Not my favorite, though. Not my favorite. Should probably put my favorite organelle in the middle because I'll call it every time. It's like a free space kind of. Mitochondria, though, sort of this kidney bean looking thing with the squiggly jigglies on the inside, performs a process of cellular respiration where the cell takes oxygen and glucose and burns them together, uh, generating ATP, which is used to perform several chemical reactions. Remember, ATP is what the cells use for energy. It's like cash money energy. Make sure you get the function here, name mitochondria. It's found in eukaryotic cells. Don't forget to get mitochondria somewhere on your bingo board. Now we're getting into some of the cooler ones. Peroxisomes are pretty sweet. They defend the cell using the toxin hydrogen peroxide, which is actually why we call them peroxisomes, since they make peroxide. On an electron micrograph, they're kind of interesting, the peroxisome, because they're almost indistinguishable from vesicles. So vesicles and peroxisomes look very similar. Uh, a lot of people think that the peroxisomes are just some kind of like highly modified vesicle. But it's kind of interesting that your cells contain this organelle for making hydrogen peroxide. And so your liver produces the enzyme catalase to protect the rest of your body from the harmful peroxide in case the peroxisomes like go off the reservation or something. Peroxisomes. Make sure you have it on here and also on here. Bingo board should be getting kind of full at this point. Lysosomes 
also very similar to vesicles that contain digestive enzymes for breaking down macromolecules. So instead of having hydrogen peroxide on the inside, they've got these nice breakdown uh, enzymes. In fact, the word lice actually even means to break, so these are the breakosomes. And again, they look very much like vesicles, and sometimes they'll even like hook up to vesicles or consume vesicles or be made out of a vesicle. Very interesting life, the lysosomes. By the way, they're my favorite, so you should probably put that one in the middle. Whatever you have in the middle, move it out of the way, put a lysosome there. Lysosome is the closest thing you're going to get to a free space, because I pretty much call it all the time, because I like me that lysosome. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cilia. The next two organelles are our final two, and they are on the outside. So cilia are small exterior organelles used for movement or filtration. You can see you've got two microorganisms here, two bacteria. This one here is covered with cilia. You can use like little swimmery things like swimming. You actually have some cells with cilia on them, but they're not for swimming. Instead, uh, they're actually on the cells of your trachea, which is commonly referred to as the windpipe. Little tiny cilia just lining the exterior of those cells uses like a filter. So when you're breathing, it's actually filtering all the air that you're breathing, which is uh, pretty crucial for the, like, not dying stuff. Also, there is a flagella, which is a larger exterior organelle used for movement. Make sure you get them on both here and here. Flagella and cilia are both also made out of cytoskeletons, so the importance of the cytoskeleton must not be overlooked. Flagella is a word that means whip like It's got this big like, whip, 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 like, uh, like whip and, right? So they can use these for swimming. This one in the picture has looks like four flagella. So I could probably swim pretty fast. Uh, Think of like flogging, that's actually a mispronunciation of flagellating, of flogging, flagellating, whipping, whipping. So these are big whips, and uh, many different cells have these, especially if they need to swim around. Those are all the organelles. You should have no blank spaces on your bingo board. If you do, you may want to run over your list here, see if you missed any of the organelles. Make sure you have this all completed. Let's play some bingo, children. This is annoying. <laughs> <laughs>